Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Game You Can Win, But Cannot Play. This is our final episode, in which we will first discuss the Shokei game, another variant on the Banach Mazu game, though I will note, as before, topologists can't really agree on their nomenclature. Some people call this game the Shokei game, and this game the strong Shokei game. <laughs> uh, but in any event, it's going to be what we're talking about. And then, uh, we'll just offer up some concluding thoughts. It probably won't be very many concluding thoughts, but it'll be the end of the series. Alright, so let's just get right into the rules of the final game we will be talking about, the Shokei game. So, in this game, it's very similar to the previous game, the sort of, uh, modified by Akamizer game, in that, set up simple. All we need is any old topological space, X. Uh, yes, so given our x, here's how the play goes. As in the previous game, player 1 chooses some non-empty open set u0 in x. However, player 1 also chooses a point in that space. This is where it gets different now. Now, player 2 chooses a non-empty open set, v0, that is a subset of the set that player 1 previously played, again, as before. And of course the set is non-empty, because otherwise the game would just kind of, you could just end the game prematurely by going, oh, I choose the empty set, and then player 1 would automatically win. Anyway, so player 2 chooses a non-empty open set, v0, that's a subset of u0, but here's the catch that v0 has to contain this point. So then player 1 goes, and they choose a subset of the set that player 2 chose, and another point in there. Now player 2, who's a non-empty open set, that is a subset of this set, again, of course, but Again, the set has to contain this point that player 1 chose. And then the game continues in this vein, so on and so forth, ad infinitum. And the win condition is the same as in the previous modified uh, Banach Mazur game. Uh, the intersection of all these sets, or equivalently, the intersection of a particular of all of a particular player's sets, has to be empty. So you can kind of think about this game as kind of a as kind of a version of the modified Banach Mazur game, where player one has more power. So they're both choosing, you know, subsets of the previous player's sets, as in the modified Banach Mazur game, as in BM of X, but now player 1 has some element of control always about the set that player 2 chooses. And as you would expect, this results in the class of sets for which player 2 has a winning strategy being more constrained in good old CH of X, the Shokei game, the strong Shokei game, uh, being a bit more constrained uh, than in just plain old BM of X. Alright, so now let's talk about the strategies for the Shokei game. Now, with the previous two uh, topological games, I made an effort to try and demonstrate uh, what strategies those games had and under what circumstances those strategies worked. However, here it gets... things get a lot more complicated, uh, whereas previously you know, player one being the winner had relatively simple conditions associated with it. Uh, now the condition for player one uh, being having a winning strategy in this game is X has to contain a G delta copy of the space of rational numbers. <laughs> uh, what does containing a copy mean? You know, homeomorphic subspace. Uh, what does G delta mean? Oh, well, let's say countable intersection of, of, 
uh, open sets. Uh, suffice to say, trying to understand this in this short amount of time, even for me to try and understand it, I'm just an undergrad, remember? It's very difficult, and we aren't even really gonna bother. That's why I just wrote a little, okay, I trust you, <laughs> there. Now, player two here, that's where things get a little interesting. Uh, not interesting enough for us to be able to understand it in a reasonable amount of time, of course. But, player two has a winning strategy in the Choquet game, if and only if, uh, it is a completely metrizable space, if we assume at the beginning, of course, that x is a metrizable space. So what this means is that if x is a metric space, if there's a measure of distance on it, then whether or not that space is complete or not, that's the same. And remember, completeness, that's if every Cauchy sequence is convergent and Cauchy sequences are ones where you know, the terms just get closer and closer together as time goes on, blah blah blah. It's the same as saying player 2 is a strategy in the Choquet game on X. Uh, so with that, there's a term, there's, uh, there's some terms associated, of course, with the Choquet game, as with uh, BM of X. Uh, remember that weekly alpha favorable meant that Player 2 had a winning strategy on BM of X, sometimes called the Choquet game. So, alpha favorable means that Player 2 has a winning strategy on this game. The Choquet game, also sometimes called the Strong Choquet game. But what if we want to go even stronger and get to strongly alpha favorable things? Well, those, those are spaces where... Uh, player 2 has a winning strategy, and furthermore, that strategy depends exclusively on player 1's previous move at every step. Uh, so, for instance, uh, the strategy we looked at for player 1 on BMX, that is an example of a tactic. Uh, that's what you call a strategy that only depends on the previous player's previous move, uh, because you know, your given move only depends on uh, what, the, what you know, the previous move was and not on any of the other previous moves or what number turn it was. And as you might expect, you know, strongly alpha-favorable is a stronger condition than alpha-favorable. And alpha-favorable is a stronger condition than weakly alpha-favorable. Alpha uh, the final note I want to make is that I mentioned earlier that if x is metrizable, then saying that it's complete is the same as saying that a player 2 has a winning strategy on the Choquet game on that space. That actually raises a very interesting question because, see, completeness is a property that we can only talk about for metric spaces. But alpha favorableness, alpha, alpha favorability, whatever. Uh, that's a property we can talk about for any topological space. This means it's not unreasonable uh, to use alpha favorability as an extension of the idea of you know, metric completeness to general, non-metrizable topological spaces. And again, I think that's amazing. You know, we have these silly, weird games that you cannot play, yet based on whether or not you can win these games that you cannot play, we can get profound results about topology, profound extensions of definitions into you know, other things that the definitions weren't supposed to do. You know, and, you know, these topological games, they aren't the only infinite games do this, and topology isn't the only field where they're useful. Uh, there are topological games, variants of the Bonach Monster game, that help with number theory, help with, it, like, you know, as far as approximation theory is concerned. And there are, there's even a game called the Oolong game, after another uh, member of the Lvov School of Mathematics. And the Oolong game, uh, you choose 
you know, binary digits each turn, and then if that set of binary, if that sequence of binary digits is in a certain space called the bare space, not a bare space, the bare space, uh, then a certain player wins. And whether or not that game is determined or not actually depends on whether or not you take the axiom of choice. In fact, you can actually take it as an axiom of set theory, the axiom of determinacy, whether or not this Oolong game is determined or not. If you're wondering, uh, the axiom of determinacy contradicts the axiom of choice, so you can't pick uh, both. Anyway, but yeah, that's one of my favorite things about math, the fact that, you know, any idea, no matter how silly, you know, oh, what if we took this, but we made it this, ends up, you know, being studied over and over again, it gets refined, it gets streamlined, people extend those ideas to other ideas, and they figure out how to use those extensive ideas to extend other ideas to other ideas, and it just, you know, builds the base of knowledge and, you know, that's what I love about mathematics. Uh, I suppose thank you everyone for watching uh, the game you can win but cannot play. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll see you around, I guess, if I ever make another school project video on this channel. <laughs>